welcome to another Height and Ridley video tutorial with thanks to George DeWolf for bringing this great technique to my attention. In this one I'm going to show you how to rescue an overexposed sky by combining two exposures. The one on the left you see is exposed for the sky and the one on the right exposed for the ground. The advantage of this technique is that the transition between sky and ground is so smooth it's not noticeable. Exactly what you're after. There are a couple of ways in which you can get your two exposures. The way I use very frequently is to shoot in RAW, something I do all the time, and then using that RAW file create one exposure for the sky and one exposure for the ground. Of course you might also set up a tripod and manually expose for the sky in one shot and then take the next shot exposed for the ground. If you're very steady with your hands, you might do this handheld using automatic bracketing. It all depends on which technique you are most uh, familiar with, most happy with. The first step is to get both exposures into the same file. And we're going to do this using the Move tool. So let's get that selected first. And we're going to move the exposure for the sky over into the file which holds the exposure for the ground. Now to do this I'm going to hold the shift key while I make the move and that will make sure that uh, the two are aligned perfectly on top of each other. So here goes, holding the shift key, I'm clicking and dragging and that's it moved over. You'll see that we now have a new layer, layer 1, in the file which was exposed or is exposed for the ground. OK, well we're finished with the, uh, the file which is exposed for the sky, so we'll close that down. And let's just uh, bring this up to full size so that we can work with it and you can see what's going on. So I'm now going to just fit to screen and that gives us a nice sized image. The next step is to add a layer mask. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on the layer mask button. We now have the layer mask on layer 1. And now we're going to copy and paste the background onto layer 1. So we'll select the background. select all. We're now going to copy and we're going to paste into that uh, uh, layer mask using alt click. So I've alt clicked and now edit paste. You'll see how it's pasted in as a black and white image and that's normal, that's what happens with this technique. And the next step is to apply a Gaussian blur filter. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur and for the resolution of image that I'm working with here 3400 by 2300 a Gaussian blur radius of 40 pixels is about right. Let's switch off the preview and switch it back on again just so that you can see the effect. So we'll OK that. Now that marquee, selection marquee is uh, annoying me so let's just deselect that. OK. Right now we're looking at the Gaussian blur on the layer mask. We'll click on the layer 1 thumbnail and that'll show us the effect on the, the image so far. Now I don't know if you've noticed but that's also darkened down the foreground so what I'm going to do is just switch that off so you can see indeed yes it has darkened down the foreground and we'll now do something about that. What we're going to do is we're going to erase from the layer 1 we're going to erase the foreground to let the um, uh, the layer underneath the background layer show through to do that, select our eraser tool. Now we want a largish and soft eraser. 
Now we don't want it ex as soft as possible. A hardness of about 15% will allow us to erase close to the, the edges and uh, conceal the, uh, the erase point and let the sky graduate nicely into that uh, uh, into the foreground and that'll give us a nice transition so let's do the erasing we just want to get close to the edge we don't uh, want to go into the sky a little bit wouldn't matter too much but uh, we'll try and avoid that and now we just erase the rest make sure we've erased everything and if we look on the layer 1 thumbnail sure enough you can see that we've erased the foreground was there a bit there? yes there was a bit still left to be erased there and we'll double check there as well so let's compare with layer 1 switched off there it is switched off and switched back on again and if you keep your eye on the transition between sky and those rooftops that's a very nice transition. What you could do if you wanted is reduce the size of the eraser as I'm doing now using the left square bracket and erase in a little bit closer to the, the to the sky there perhaps up around these chimneys and again compare the before and after so that's before, that's after before and after. And I think you'll agree that's a very nice transition between the sky and the rooftops. So this finishes the aspect of uh, combining these two images together and the next step would be to continue with the image processing uh, for example applying a contrast adjustment. Now I'm going to leave that for another tutorial and you will find links to it from my web pages, from my blog, and in my YouTube account. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the technique that I've just shown you, that you've learned something from it, and that you'll think it's good enough to add to your own toolkit. Thanks for watching. Bye.